All right, welcome back, Dream Media, to my cozy media room. This was a pool table room. Pool table had to go. And now we're gonna make it into the ultimate home theater. So let's get into what I plan to do. At the front of the room, we're getting rid of those 255 inch TVs. We're gonna be doing the brand new Epson LS800. And that is a 4K three chip LCD ultra short throw projector with 4,000 lumens of brightness. The reason that I had to go with that projector is not only does it look phenomenal, literally looks like a television on the wall when I saw it at Cedia this year at 2022, but I have a lot of light in the space. I do have some knockout shades from Screen Innovations for viewing during the middle of the day, or say we just wanna optimize our experience. I can drop all these shades, and of course I have dimmers from Lutron on all of the lighting in the room. With that said, I wanted to get the best possible image. So I paired that together with the Epson 120 inch ALR screen. This is specifically designed for the Epic Vision LS800. The 120 inch has a really thin frame, giving it like a zero edge look as if a TV's on the wall. And a lot of people are gonna think that it is a TV on the wall because of how bright it is. I can even do gaming in this room. This is gonna be great for you know all of my nieces and nephews. Uh, they come into town, they're like, you know, between five and 12 years old, hook up the Xbox, hook up the PlayStation, have a place for them to sit down and game and, and bond together as kids. Um, I think we got a, a, a 16.7 millisecond lag on this projector, making it ideal for gaming. It's super quick, guys. That's the projector and screen combo that I decided to go with. And I wanted to make everything look as good as possible and hide the equipment away from the kiddo. So at the bottom below the screen is going to be the projector. And that projector is going to go in a Salamander Designs, the Chicago series, ultra short throw cabinet that's specifically designed for this LS800. And we sell Salamander, we sell Epson, we sell everything that you're going to see in this tour, guys. So reach out to our specialists to discuss options and see if some of these things could potentially work in your space. But that Chicago Salamander designs cabinet is going to house the projector and keep the kids from bumping it but also i can put all the other equipment in there as far as the avr i'm going to be going with the moran cinema 50. i did an unboxing video on it and fell in love i was like done this is going upstairs in the media room it's an 11.4 channel processor and because this room is huge and open um we have to do multiple subwoofers Right. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is two here in the rear of the room. I'm gonna be putting a couple uh, PB16 Ultras, as well as at the front of the room, I'm gonna do a couple SVS SB2000s, which are gonna flank to the left and right of that Salamander Designs cabinet. So back to the internals of the cabinet. I'm gonna have inside of there the ultra short throw cabinet. I'm gonna have our AVR, um, which does the amplification and the processing. We're gonna have the latest and greatest HDMI 2.0 8K 60 Hertz, and we're going to be hooking up to that Kaleidoscape, the ultimate movie player. Guys, whenever you're wanting to maximize your experience, look no further for a movie player than Kaleidoscape. They have 10 times the video quality, 10 times the audio quality, and absolutely zero lag. You're not connecting to the internet to stream the video. It actually downloads that video to the hard drive, and then you're guaranteed to get the absolute best lossless quality on both the video and the audio. In addition to the Marantz Cinema 50, we're gonna need an extra two-channel amplifier, and I'm gonna be using the Marantz 7025, which is a two-channel amplifier that is gonna connect to the AVR. I'm gonna use the pre-outs on the back and take analog audio out of the pre-outs into the 7025 so that I can power up two additional speakers in the room. So let's get into the configuration of surround sound that I'm gonna be working with. We could do Dolby Atmos, we could do RO3D, we could do DTS-X. We have options, right? Well, one of my best sellers is Dolby Atmos. So what I'm gonna be doing in this space is one of our top recommendations, Dolby Atmos. In particular, what I'm going to be doing is a 5.4.6 
Dolby Atmos system. Let me break that down for you a little bit, guys. Five, meaning the bed layer, the ground level effects. We're gonna have three in the front and two in the rear. And then we're gonna have four subwoofers, two in the front and two in the rear. And with the new Cinema Series, all of these are independently controllable and I can calibrate it with the Odyssey setup for now. And then in quarter one of 2023, I can do direct live for an even more premium calibration. Now, the overhead effects, that's the dot six. So we got five, dot four, dot six overhead speakers. I wanna hear those planes and helicopters and bullets, everything flying around above me, making it a really immersive experience. Now, we're working with 15 foot ceilings here and they're vaulted and angled. So I'm gonna be using up there the Focal ICA6, which is an aimable in-ceiling speaker. That way I can rotate the speaker and aim all of the audio towards the target seating area, which is really gonna be right here. Um, so with that particular design, the A6, you got a 35 degree angle that the woofer's set at, and then you can also adjust the tweeter to maximize your dispersion, which is really nice. Now, for my surround speakers, I'm gonna be doing the Focal 300 IW6 in-wall speakers, and those also have a rotatable tweeter, and those are gonna go to the left and the right of the snowboards on the back wall, and we're gonna rotate those tweeters inwards. Because of the bar being offset here to the side, I really can't get surround speakers in place, but I'm gonna go ahead and run wires anyways in case down the line I wanna put a couple speakers, say, on stands or mount one to the wall over here and put one on a stand over here for a 7.4.6 Atmos system if I end up checking out, say, that new Marantz AV10 or Amp10, which could be a potential... I'm always upgrading, so that, that, that could happen in the future. So when it comes to the pre-wire this space, I'm just gonna go overkill. And then at the front of the room, we're gonna be doing the Focal 302s, flanking to the left, right, and center of the screen. I fell in love with the Focal 302s the first time I heard them in one of our customers' homes. He had it in the living room, terrible acoustics, super echoey, uh, reverbing like crazy. He had the, the speaker above a mantle, below the TV, and it still sounded incredible. So ever since then, I've been selling them like crazy to our customers and recommending it left and right, but I had to get it in my own home. And if you're not wanting to go quite that crazy with the uh, 302, they also have a smaller form factor 301 speaker, which is the one that I think I may end up doing to the left and right here down the road. Um, it basically has two woofers instead of four, but it still features that aluminum magnesium inverted dome tweeter for the crystal clear highs. One other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys that I always recommend when pre-wiring is just to go a little overkill. So behind the screen, I'm going to run a couple extra Cat6 cables that can be used for control over like say an LED kit. Um, it can be used to convert a signal from, um, from Cat6 over to HDMI in case I wanted to get rid of the ultra short there down the road and do a big micro LED, which down the road as prices come down, that's going to be more and more uh, achievable for the app average homeowner. I'm also going to be running a couple Cat6 back here to the rear of the room since I'm going to have to tear up this ceiling anyways, um, just in case I want to go with a long throw projector here at the rear of the room. Um, or maybe I want to put uh, a couple uh, projectors here at the rear of the room and do a drop down screen to do projector shootouts for you guys. I'm just going to overkill the wiring um, and have it set up for the ultimate setup if I want to go that route. But for right now, we're talking 120 inch screen, 4 K, uh, LS800, Salamander Designs, Kaleidoscape. I'm gonna throw a watt box surge protector on the whole thing with a battery backup to make sure everything's protected. I'm gonna throw those little watt box single outlet surge protectors on all the subwoofers to make sure it's protected from lightning. Um, and then I'm gonna do the full 302s up front with the IW6s in the rear and the A6s overhead with the SVS PB16 Ultras and the SB2000s in the front. 
What do you guys think? Is that gonna be a killer setup or what? Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video with me letting you know what my decision was to transform this pool table room into an epic family home theater. I hope that you guys enjoy this information and enjoy my journey as I create this space. If you aren't a subscriber already, smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up. I'm gonna continue to update you guys as this room develops. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.